Hi there, my name is Jaakko. Welcome to Substance Alchemist tutorial. In this tutorial I'm taking a look at how to use Substance Alchemist to create material from image and also how to do all kinds of processing to the images in here and how we can really take advantage of the uh, new AI based processing and effects. So um, this is just going to be, I'm going to show you guys the UI and then we're going to jump into material creation. So. You can see that this is the, the basic window and if you hit tab key you can uh, go to the 2D and then the 3D the preview. So I'm just going to go back to 3D now. So you have like these different uh, buttons in here. You have view settings and you can change the mesh in here. You have like a cube and plane and rounded cube, cloth and, and, and even a shoe in here. So I'm going to be doing like a concrete material so maybe the shoe isn't the best I'm gonna go back to plain so uh, like so you can change those and then you also have the environments in here you can change the between the different type of uh, um, uh, panorama HDRIs in here so um, maybe I'm just gonna go with the uh, maybe this this could be good good way to start all right so um, so yeah, um, this is the basic thing and then you have also this project uh, box in here. So if you create materials, you can uh, save them and then they will be appearing under the, your project. So I already created my project. So if you want to create your own, you can just go to the new project and uh, choose your name and description and author and those things and also the workflow. So if you're doing metallic roughness, you can choose that or spec clause. So we're just going to do the metallic roughness in this case. So um, let's get started. It's fastest way to learn is to just get your feet wet. So um, I'm just gonna go uh, here. So what I've done is that I downloaded image of uh, concrete from internet and this isn't like ideal image for material creation in any means. So we have a challenge of uh, some strange uh, shadowy type of a lighting artifact in here. And then you have those details that that we need to uh, get rid of probably or maybe at least maybe hide some of them. So we can do all of that in uh, Substance, Substance Alchemist which is really nice. So we don't need to go back to Photoshop and fix and then try to match and so on. So I'm just gonna go and drag and drop and see what happens. So we get this window here. So we have image and material option in here either AI powered or bitmap to material which is the legacy version so the AI powered is the newer version then you have multi angle to material so if you have a series of images which have a captured by using a, a angled light from different angles uh, you can do that this is really a powerful way to process your materials so we have actually there's actually this type of, type of like a material scanners which are these boxes which have like a LED lights that are uh, going around the mat material sample and then you're going to be able to get really high detail height maps and normal maps using this, this method. So maybe in another tutorial we can take a look at processing those images. And they also have a texture import. So if you already have textures with uh, imported maps such as uh, uh, normal maps and roughness maps and those things, you can also use, um, use these. But in our case, we, we need to do some uh, processing to our data before we feed it to the AI powered mission materials. So I'm just going to use this use uh, as bitmap. I'm not going to hit OK. So now what we see, we see nothing. So I'm going to hit tab key and uh, I'm going to go to scan. So now we see our uh, image. Image in here like so. So first uh, we can see that we don't have actually square image we have like a rectangle image this is our aspect ratio 1000 by 768 786 so we need to go and do crop first so i'm going to go and click this uh add layer and then we do crop so now what happens is that we have new layers so these are really like photoshop layers you could think of this like as a processing stack so you can go back to the below stage. If you want to change something in the stack, you can change that. And it's going to process accordingly the, the, the effects that are on top of that. So now we have this crop in here. And again, we 
just see these box. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose layer inputs. And now we see our original image resolution, which is 1000 by 768. So I'm going to click, uh, just click this and type 1000 in here. And then I'm going to go 768. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm just going to go to layer outputs to see what we are done. And I don't know why this happens. This is weird. So if we see, it's just like it flipped back to, uh, to 4000. So I'm going to go and fix that. 1000 by 768, like so. So now maybe uh, we want to adjust this. Of course, we're not crop this. So I'm going to crop like so. Maybe something like this might work. And then I'm going to hit this make square so we get the exact square. So now we still want to make sure that the tire, uh, the, the cropping works. So I'm going to hit T in my keyboard. So I'm going to see the uh, tiling, what we have so far. So maybe we need to go and adjust it. Maybe something like that. So we, we not, we're not getting those, those weird uh, borders. Okay, so let's say that we could be maybe happy with something like that. I'm just going to make sure that we're going to square and click make square. So now we have uh, basically uh, processed our image so that we're going to be able to feed this to the image to material processor. So I'm going to add layer. And I'm going to do image to material AI powered. I'm going to click this and let it process. So you can see that when it does that, it means that it's processing. So we actually created all the maps now. So we have a base color, normal, roughness, and height, and then ambient occlusion. So yeah, we basically have something now. First thing that comes to my mind is, you can see that we have this kind of shadow in here, and we can fix this. So let's let's see what we can do. So I'm just going to go... Um, First, we obviously we do have like this. Uh, if we look at the image material, we have a bunch of settings in here. We have geometry equalizer. We also have delighting in here. So this delighting actually does already some of that. So you can see that it removes those um, uh, shadows of those like crevices, those like holes in there. So this delighter is really powerful. It actually does a lot of work for us already. But then we have this big. Uh, a shadow which we need to get rid of so i'm going to go to add layer and then i'm going to go eq equalizer so look at that that's um i think this is really really cool like we just add one layer and it, it, it looks like this it looks i think it looks pretty good i mean isn't this cool just like like so it's just hitting like this and then boom you you, you um got rid of the shadow you do have like this radius in here and it, it, it does sort of like, you can sort of like uh, adjust how uh, powerful it is. But yeah, I mean, right. So we have now um, this. Go back to the uh, 3D view. You can see that we have like um, several options. We have displacement and tiling and shadows. So um, the shadows are a sort of like preview of the, of the, so it looks like a ray trace type of uh, shadow. So you can either use them or not. And then you have like the displacement. So you can see that we can adjust uh, how strong the preview of the displacement is. So this isn't, these settings are not changing the material. These are just changing the preview. So it's good to, to use a little bit like decent values, not so high values in here, and then try to tweak it rather in the material. So to, to go back to our uh, material, so we have like our height in here and the height is a little bit strong. So I'm going to go back to our image material and then I'm going to go and adjust this geometry equalizer. So I think that probably uh, this isn't the best. So maybe some value like something like this might be better for our in our case. So let's say that maybe this is what we want. Um, we also have the same for the roughness, so you can uh, adjust the 
the values that we are we are creating by this and also this is pretty i think pretty decent because we can see that the crevices are more rough because maybe they have dust in them and then still you have some kind of like basic uh basic glossiness also happening here so if you um hit shift and um right mouse button you can rotate light and you can preview the roughness in that way so maybe the base value could be could be something like this who knows maybe like so all right so now um uh, let's say that we are happy with what we have so far we have our uh base color again i'm gonna go back to here to our top uh, layer so we are able to view our effect in the so you have our uh, base color, normal, roughness, and and then the rest of the maps, like so. So yes, we need to fix the tiling. So we can see that we have this seam in here. So to go to here, you can see that we have tiling two and two. So if you just look one, we can see that we are previewing it now like, like this is one tile. So uh, we maybe should go like, um, oh actually yeah, it's looks buggy so maybe like um yeah the two two by two so now we can see the tile actually in here and if we go to this we can t so we can see the tile as well so there are multiple ways to fix this um uh, first i'm going to show you the automatic way which is really cool so we can just go in here and tiling right tiling like so now now we have uh this and you can see that it, it's starting to try to fix our tiling issues so i'm going to maybe scale this down a little bit so something like that and then you can see that it it's sort of like doing something maybe we could uh yeah the roughness actually shows it pretty well i think so maybe um just try to scale it down a little bit something like that and then adjust this so we are getting a decent type of result so you can see that it's kind of like messing up the edge and if you go to the edge setting in here you can see our detect, detect edges turn on and then you have this threshold and what this does is that threshold one it's it's like uh, going to the edge just to go to the border so we just kind of find a sweet spot in here so i think something like this could could do it you can also go to grid resolution to sort of like if we go to here you can maybe see it better let's see i think it's difficult to see in our case how it does but um i think you can kind of get the idea that that like um it's sort of like this means that it's breaking up more frequency. It's using more frequency to break it up more like jacked edge, and this is going to be more like broad strokes type of thing. So, in this case, it kind of does work pretty well, actually. I, I think um, I'm not going to be able to find straight edge in here if I'm trying to look look for it. This is one way. Yeah. So we could uh, say that we could be happy with this, but I'm going to sh I'm going to show you also another way so i'm gonna maybe delete this uh tiling and i'm just gonna go back in here and then we have this um field so i'm gonna go image content aware field so actually we're gonna use material content aware field because we want to process all the all the channels at once so i'm gonna click this and let's see what comes so um so we need to change this material outputs so uh what we see in here is that just uh, basically what this is is that this is a photoshop clone patch type of deal so i'm going to click like paint something in here it's going to process and it's going to fill that area with the surrounding information so there's a way we can use this to hide our uh, tiling seams so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to do a transform and i'm going to move this to below our material content aware fill and then I'm gonna rot just gonna move our uh, offset our texture this way. So maybe something like this could work. So it's gonna take a little time to process. So I'm gonna hide this for now. So we're gonna be able to see what we are doing with our transform.
like so. And then I'm going to enable our material content aware field. And now we can we can come in here and you can just paint out our seams in this way. And it's going to process them and it's going to use AI to, to fill those um, those areas that we uh, define in this way. So this is a very powerful way to to process our our material data this way. So now we have this decent looking concrete material that we came up with just by using one image. And what we can do is that we can play around with this and have some fun now. So I'm going to go and do floor tiles. These are the filters that come with a Substance Alchemist. So now just by uh, doing the floor tiles, we can see that we are now completely breaking this material up to these tiles. And it just, uh, I think this is kind of mind boggling how cool this is. So now we have a material which looks like uh, floor tiles and, and it just works. Um, you can see that we have like different options in here. So this is actually what this is, is that this is a substance that you can create by using Substance Designer and you can expose those parameters that are going to be visible here. So you can see I have a tile amount in here and we also have a gap in here, like so, so I have a gap roughness and and if we go to our roughness, we can see that uh, we can adjust the roughness in those uh, grout areas. And then we can also do like bevels in here. If, if we want to do like more this type of floor, this also is possible. You have different options for the bevel profiles in here. Maybe in this case, I'm just going to do like no bevel. We also have floor tilt, which is really cool. So if we got normal map, you can see that this floor tilt is going to well, it, yeah, it sort of shows up in the normal map. You can see that those are now tilted. Those, um, yeah, those uh, blocks are now uh, being like tilted in that way. You can also add dirt in here. So, um, yeah, already you can see that we have a usable material that, that we created by using filters and, and, and uh, image data. We could also just go really crazy with this. So let's make uh, something like a Bioshock material. So I'm going to go and do dirt. And it's going to add this. And then what I can do is that maybe reduce the quantity a little bit. Something like that. So now we have dirt in here. We could make it change the color a little bit. Uh, to maybe blend it better with the Yes, something like this could be. We could do edge protect also. Yeah, this actually kind of looks quite quite nice. I think you have all also color transition contrast, so it it, it sort of like uh, affects the way how it's blended and so on. You get you get the idea. I think we could also do water, <laughs> and this is like one of the really uh, show to your friend kind of things. So uh, now we have like this semi wet. And you can see that the water height, uh, what level it respects the height values that we have in our material. So you can see that some of those uh, plates are lower, lower in height, and then the water will uh, the way how the water is distributed it respects that so you can get this really realistic and cool type of effect so this is it uh, roughly uh, substance alchemist is really powerful so we have also much more filters if you go in here you can see that we have a lot of things and i can't cover all of these but just play around with this just get in here and change things and add things and see what you can come up with I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, please leave a comment uh, just write to the comments what what you if you have any thoughts or uh, ideas just would love to hear from you guys so this was Jakko and I hope to see you in the next tutorial bye bye